Grade 6 math, number 10.5b, solve division equations for x. So remember, a variable is just the letter of an alphabet that takes the place of an unknown number. And a solution of an equation is the value of a variable that makes an equation true. If we had the equation 8 over y equals 4, we'd know the value of the variable y is 2 because it would make the equation true. See? All right. To solve a division equation for x, we need to isolate the x on one side of the equal sign. And we do this by using the inverse operation of the sign in the equation. So if it's a division sign or division problem, we use the multiplication property of equality. And it says, if we multiply both sides of an equation by the same number, the two sides will remain equal. So remember, fractions are little division problems. If we have 12 over 3, it really means 12 divided by 3, and it equals 4. So if we have x over 6 equals 3, it really means that we need to find the big number that when divided by 6 is equal to 3. Now I know that some of you say, well, we could just multiply these, okay? But that's basically what we're doing. I know we can multiply 6 times 3 and get 18, and that would be the answer, but that is what we're doing. But we're going to do it with the 6. We're going to multiply 6 on this side and 6 on this side. And we're going to turn it into a 6 over a 1 improper because this is a fraction, and that way we can multiply fractions to fractions. See, 3 over 1 is the whole number 3 times the 6 over 1. So we end up with a 6x over 6 and an 18 over 1. This 6 cancels out this 6, and we end up with x equals 18. Now the reason I'm showing you this in such an easy problem is in the future, we're going to come across some very, very difficult problems that if you can understand how I did this, you're going to understand the difficult problems. So yeah, I know we could have just done 6 times 3, but I'm setting you up for more difficult problems that we're going to have to multiply each side, okay? So I want to make sure you understand how to do this. All right, let's take a look at this one. We've got z over 4 equals 7. We would multiply both sides by the 4, by the denominator, okay? So we're going to do 4 over 1 multiplied on this side, and 4 over 1 multiplied on this side, and the 7 is going to go over 1 to turn it into a fraction also. We end up with 4z over 4 is equal to 28 over 1. See? This 4 cancels out that 4, because 4 fourths is 1, and we have z equals 28. See? Let's try it again. p over 10 equals 7. We're going to multiply both sides by the denominator. 10 over 1 times p over 10, and 7 over 1 times 10 over 1. See? Because we're multiplying this fraction, we have to turn everybody into a fraction. We end up with 10p over 10 is equal to 70 over 1. This 10 cancels out that 10. 10 10, so just 1. So we have p equals 70. See? One last time. v over 3 equals 8. We're going to multiply both sides by the denominator. So it's going to be 3 over 1 to be an improper fraction. That's going to go over 1, and that's going to be 3 over 1. So that we can have them all as fractions because this guy's a fraction. Okay? We're going to end up with 3v over 3 equals 24 over 1. See? This 3 cancels out that 3 because 3 thirds is equal to 1. So we have 1v equals 24. See? And we don't have to put the 1 in front of the v at all. So we don't need to do that. We can see there's just one v here, see? Whenever a variable has no number in front of it, it means there's just one of them, all right? So I want you to remember that to solve the addition or subtraction equations to find x, we use the inverse operation. Addition uses subtraction, subtraction uses addition, and the same with the multiplication and division. The multiplication uses division, and division uses multiplication, like right here. We used multiplication. All right? We can solve for x using their inverse operation to isolate x to one side of the equal sign, and we can check to see if our solution, the value for the variable, is correct by plugging it into the equation to see if it's true. All right? Let's see if it's true. Is p really 70? 70 over 10 is equal to 7? Yep, that's true. How about this one? z equals 28. Is 28 over 4 really 7? Yep, because 7 times 4 is 28. So yeah, it works, and then we can check them too. So that's how we solve division equations for x. I'm going to do my next video on what does it mean to solve an equation or to evaluate one or to simplify one, because that's what it says in the book. Sometimes it says solve, sometimes it says evaluate, and other times it says simplify. 
What does that mean? So we'll talk about that in 10.5c. Bye.